My name is Terry Box. As Sheriff of Collin County, I know full well that we do not live in a perfect world. I realize that life can be difficult, the right choices are not always clear, and people can make mistakes. Perhaps that's why you're here. If this is your first time in a detention facility, you probably find the thought of confinement humiliating, even frightening. Let me assure you that Collin County respects your rights as set forth in the United States Constitution. We are committed to fair and humane treatment of everyone in our custody. We are also committed to a, maintain a safe and secure environment for everyone in this facility. Our detention officers are well trained, fully capable of handling any situation. While in this facility, we expect your total cooperation. We expect you to conduct yourself in a responsible and respectful manner at all times with regards both to our staff and fellow inmates. And we expect you to abide by our rules and regulations. These rules are very strictly enforced. Violations will not be tolerated. And infractions will be met with swift and decisive disciplinary action in accordance with the guidelines set forth by the Texas Commission on Jail Standards. By the same token, responsible behavior will be rewarded. For example, the ability to move freely around the pod day room and recreation yard. You'll also have the chance to participate in various self-improvement programs. It is our hope that these programs will provide the opportunity you need to turn your life back in the right direction after your release. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the Collin County Detention Facility and the services available here. Its purpose is also to brief you on the standard of conduct expected, as well as the rules, procedures, and policies that will govern your life while you're in confinement here. You will also receive a printed inmate handbook. As part of your orientation, you will be given time to read the printed handbook carefully and completely. After reading it, if you have any questions, you may direct them to the pod officer. You will then be required to sign a form acknowledging your understanding of the information in the handbook. The band on your wrist is for identification. You will need it to buy from the commissary, receive indigent supplies, or leave your pod. You are forbidden to remove your wristband or tamper with it in any way. If it's damaged or destroyed, the cost of replacement will be deducted from your commissary account. If you're to remain in custody in this facility, you will be assigned to a housing unit, referred to as a pod, and to an individual cell and bunk within that pod. Each housing unit is supervised by a pod officer. When you're assigned to a cell, you'll be required to sign a cell inspection form, which describes the condition of your cell at the time you move in. You are required to maintain your cell in this same condition. Damaging your cell is a prosecutable violation. Each pod includes a day room and recreation yard. All inmates, including those with disabilities, have equal access to the recreation yard. The only equipment allowed in the yard is the basketball. Anything else, including combs, commissary items, and paper, is prohibited. During your free time, you can watch television in your pod's day room. However, adjusting the picture or changing channels is done only by the pod officer. Inmates are not allowed to operate or adjust the televisions. To watch television, you must be seated in a chair, and the chair must be kept on the carpeted area. You are not permitted to stand in front of a television set or beside it. Televisions will be turned off during mealtimes and headcounts. They may also be turned off at the discretion of the pod officer. Meals are served three times a day in your pod day room. During meals, you will sit where the pod officer assigns you. A number of drinks are available at your pod's beverage bar. It also has hot and cold water taps that can be used to prepare packaged soups and drinks, which are available from the commissary. The beverage bar will be open or closed at the discretion of the pod officer. You are not allowed to give away, trade, steal, sell, or waste food. It's also against regulations to bring food in from outside sources. While in the facility, you must wear the standard uniform that's been issued to you. 
you are not allowed to tear, alter, or deface it in any way. You're expected to keep your clothing clean and to be properly dressed any time you're outside your cell. The exception is in the recreation yard. There, you are permitted to roll the uniform down to your waist, provided you're wearing a t-shirt. Fresh clothing will be provided twice a week, more often if your work assignment requires it. When you're booked into the Collin County Detention Facility, you're allowed to keep certain personal items in your possession. They include your prescription glasses or reading glasses, your contact lenses along with your lens case and cleaners, your dentures and denture adhesives, one copy of your preferred religious text, such as the Bible or Koran, your legal papers or materials, and up to 10 personal photographs no larger than 8 by 10. All your other personal property has been tagged and will be stored while you're in confinement. If you prefer, you can release your personal property to a family member or friend, but only on an all-or-nothing basis. To do so, you must fill out a property release form available from your pod officer. You can also have a friend or family member pick up your property if you're about to be sent directly from this facility to a state or federal prison. This must be done within 15 days of your transfer. After that, your property will be donated to charity. The Collin County Detention Facility has definite rules about what you can and cannot keep in your cell. Your inmate handbook has a complete list of items permitted in your cell. In addition to the personal property identified earlier, they include three pairs of county issue socks, three t-shirts, three bras, and three pairs of white underwear, two pairs of county issue coveralls, one towel, one mat cover, and two blankets, one toothbrush, and one hair comb or pick issued by the commissary plus medications and personal hygiene items such as soap and shampoo. You may also keep up to five magazines or books in your cell to include only one county library book. Prohibited items include fruits and other food items from your meal tray as well as salt and condiments, cardboard boxes, newspapers more than one day after receipt, and medications of any kind except those purchased from the commissary or authorized by infirmary personnel. You are not permitted to keep money on your person or in your cell. Any money you had with you when you were booked into this facility has been deposited in a personal bank account under your name. You can use the funds from this account to make purchases from the commissary. You are not allowed to transfer money from your account to another inmate's. Your family and friends can deliver money for deposit in your account, either in person or by mail. You are required to keep your cell and your day room neat and clean at all times. This includes keeping your bunk made. Cleaning supplies are provided. You're also obligated to handle a share of the daily housekeeping chores in your pod. You are likewise expected to keep yourself neat and clean at all times. Your pod is equipped with showers and you are required to bathe every day. For health, safety, or sanitary reasons, the staff may direct you to cut your hair or fingernails. Haircuts are available from reasonably skilled individuals on a voluntary basis. Symbols, gang signs, and outrageous styles are not permitted. You can obtain normal medical, dental, or mental health care by filling out a health services request form. The medical staff will respond to your request as soon as possible. In case of a medical emergency, notify your pod officer immediately. Under state law, you are required to reimburse Collin County for medical expenses, including prescription drugs and any visits to a nurse, dentist, or doctor. These expenses will be covered by money in your personal account. For more information, refer to your inmate handbook. Strict rules have been established for inmate conduct and for movement within the facility. Rules which you must follow at all times without exception. Whenever you leave your pod, for medical attention for example, you must walk next to the wall on the right side of the hallway and you must travel directly to your destination with no delays or side trips. When walking with a group, 
you must walk in single file, keeping the inmate in front of you at an arm's length away. Talking in the hallway is not permitted. You are not allowed to come closer than an arm's length to the pod desk without permission from the pod officer. At no time will you lean over the pod desk or enter its workstation area. All inmates are required to respect the rights and property of other inmates. You are not allowed to enter any cell other than your own. It is also a violation to stand in front of another inmate's cell, to peer through the window, or to knock on the door. Anytime you hear a pod officer call for a rack up or a lockdown, you must go back to your cell right away. If your door is locked, stand in front of it quietly. At a rack up and before each meal, you are required to stand for a head count. If you fail to do so, you will be subject to disciplinary action, such as a 23 hour lockdown. Misconduct in any form will not be tolerated. Your inmate handbook contains an extensive list of infractions and the types of sanctions that may be imposed in each case. All incidents will be reported and reviewed by the staff. In most cases, misconduct will result in the loss of privileges or confinement in the special housing unit. The violation of a major infraction may also result in the loss of good time credit. Keep in mind that your conduct will have a direct bearing on the length of your confinement here. The pod officer is the first person you should contact for information or for help with any special needs. The pod officer will direct your request to the appropriate staff member. If you have a complaint regarding conditions or about any actions taken against you, you're entitled to file a grievance. These are the recognized grounds for a grievance. To file a grievance, you must obtain a grievance form from your pod officer, fill it out, and place it in the mailbox in your pod. The grievance board will consider your grievance and reply with a decision. If you're not satisfied with the board's decision, you may appeal directly to the sheriff. The sheriff's decision is final. If your grievance is more in the nature of a complaint, it will be reviewed and answered by a supervisor. At the Collin County Detention Facility, safety and security are of primary importance. Anytime you believe that your personal safety is threatened, or that another inmate is in jeopardy, we urge you to notify the detention staff immediately. Security is the reason that all inmates at this facility are subject to being searched. Searches may occur at any time at the discretion of our personnel. These searches will be unannounced, and they may include your cell, your pod, your property, or your person. Your complete cooperation is expected during these searches. You do not have the right to be present when your cell and property are searched. Any contraband found during these searches will be confiscated. Contraband is defined as anything in your possession that is not authorized by the policies, rules, and regulations of this facility, was not issued to you by detention facility staff, was not purchased by you from the commissary, or has been modified or altered from its original condition. Your inmate handbook contains a full list of contraband items. Major examples include alcoholic beverages and all drugs and narcotics, all weapons and anything else that could be used to inflict injury, such as keys and hard combs, gasoline or lighter fluid, razors at unauthorized times, and any pornographic or sexually suggestive books, magazines, pictures, or drawings. Possession of contraband is a serious violation and will result in severe sanctions. You can purchase snack items and beverages, hygiene supplies and medications, socks and underwear, writing materials, and various other small items from the inmate commissary. The commissary will visit your pod twice a week. If you will be on a work assignment during its visit, you can request the items you need using a commissary order form. Purchases must not exceed $75 per week, excluding medications. If you do not have money in your account, you may receive indigent supplies from the commissary each Wednesday. During your confinement, you can receive and send letters as often as you wish, provided the letters do not violate U.S. Postal Service regulations. You may use only the stationary items available from the commissary. Your outgoing mail must include your full address in this format, Collin County Detention Facility, your full name, your pod and cell assignment, 
4300 Community Avenue, McKinney, Texas, 75071. All incoming mail must include the sender's full return address. The contents of any parcel must be listed on the outside. Otherwise, it will be returned to the sender unopened. Certain items are not allowed in the facility, such as tapes, compact discs, and food from outside sources. Any such item sent to you in the mail will be confiscated and returned to the sender. All the letters we receive for you will be opened and inspected prior to being delivered to you by the mail officer. The only exceptions are letters from your attorney, the courts, government officials, jail and prison officials, grievance system administrators, and parole authority members. Sealed envelopes will be opened and inspected for contraband. The mail officer or the pod officer will do this in front of you. Books, magazines, and learning materials are allowed, but only when they are sent directly to this facility from the publisher. It is your responsibility to make sure the publisher or distributor includes a complete return address on the package. All books and magazines will be thoroughly searched. Again, complete information on mail procedures and regulations can be found in your inmate handbook. You are allowed to have visits from family members and friends. As a general rule, only persons whose names appear on your visiting list will be allowed in the facility. You may include up to five names on your list, and you can change your list every 30 days. Visiting days are posted in your pod and are subject to change without notice. You are allowed only one adult visitor per visiting day. Visits are limited to 25 minutes each. In case of an emergency, you may request a contact visit. Such requests will be considered on an individual basis. The use of vulgar language or gestures during a visit is prohibited. Violation of this rule will result in immediate termination of the visit and prompt disciplinary action. Your inmate handbook contains the complete list of visitation rules. Telephones are available in each pod and may be used during your free time. All phone calls must be made collect. You may use the phone system to call your attorney. However, contact with the district attorney's office must be made by mail or through your attorney. While you can make outside calls, you are not permitted to receive them, and the staff will not take messages for you except in the case of a verifiable emergency or a call from your attorney. You are strictly forbidden to call the victim of the crime you are accused of committing. You are likewise forbidden to call anyone who has requested that you not contact them by phone. The system may be monitored to prevent its use in fraudulent or harassing phone calls. In addition, the phone service will be turned off during headcounts and meals, or any other time at the pod officer's discretion. Like all inmates, you'll be screened for inmate worker status. Once you pass the acceptance process, you'll be assigned to one of the many jobs available in this facility. Your conduct and performance on the job will earn you good time credit, which may be used to reduce your fines, court costs, and time served. If you're granted worker status, you'll be expected to perform your job to the best of your ability and not abuse the responsibility you've been given. This facility provides a number of self-improvement programs that you may be able to participate in depending on your custody status. Educational programs include a GED and basic skills course. The GED course prepares you for the GED test. It covers reading, math, science, social studies, and writing. The basic skills course provides an opportunity for you to improve your reading, math, and writing skills. Religious programs include Bible studies and worship services. Bibles are available on request from the program staff. Schedules for these services will be posted in your pod. The Drug and Alcohol Recovery Program offers Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, library services, and a variety of indoor and outdoor recreational activities are also available. If you are eligible and would like to take part in any of these programs, you must submit an inmate request form to your pod officer. If you were arrested on a felony charge, a Collin County officer will visit you within seven days to determine if you can secure attorney representation. You may be asked to sign a statement confirming the accuracy of the information you provide. This information will be reviewed by the court assigned to hear your case. 
If you are not visited by a county officer within seven days, we urge you to contact the housing lieutenant by submitting an inmate request form. If you have been in custody for at least three months and have not been brought to trial, you should contact the jail case coordinator by submitting an inmate request form. Depending on the severity of the charge against you, you may be eligible for the pretrial release program. This allows you to be released from custody until your scheduled court appearance. Every inmate awaiting trial will be screened by the jail case coordination staff for possible pretrial release. The Collin County Detention Facility does not discriminate in any manner on the basis of disability. It is our firm policy that individuals with disabilities have the same right to access the same areas as any other inmates with the same security restrictions. If you feel you've been denied equal access to any area or privilege, you have the right to file a grievance. And you may contact our Compliance Coordinator, Assistant Chief Deputy Randy Clark, regarding any accommodation issues you are encouraged to request accommodations as needed. The purpose of this video is to provide you with only a briefing on the major points of policy and procedure in this facility. Complete and detailed information will be found in your printed inmate handbook. At this time, you are expected to study it very thoroughly. Then bring any questions to the immediate attention of your pod officer.